Hi, my name is Kevin Webb with Mentor, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to utilize our new MRA Revolution DFM analysis system within Valor NPI. The MRA Revolution is a new approach to DFM rule creation from within Valor NPI, beginning with version 10.0. It greatly simplifies the process, making accurate DFM results much easier to achieve. It makes use of PCB design technology and process constraints to automatically determine the DFM analysis to run as well as the DFM values to utilize. It provides a more streamlined DFM process and eliminates the need for legacy ERFs and checklists and makes concurrent DFM more practical. This new approach to DFM analysis really shines in the efforts of left-shifting DFM analysis within a concurrent environment. MRA Revolution can be set up to understand the stage of the design and perform only the analysis needed at that stage of the process. Setup for this new approach for analysis is an easy three-step process. First, you need to set up what we call factors, which in large part are attributes within the designs. Simply set your desired options for each factor and you're ready to move to the next step. The second step is to classify your design by creating your desired means of classifying your design types. This could be in many different forms such as technology types, design stage, or possibly vendors if you so choose. And once that is done, simply bring in your desired factors to further classify your design. Then the third step is to update your constraints. Both the classifications and the factors drive into the constraint area so you can easily fine tune exactly how you want to set up your rules to analyze your design. In this example, we have set up a few factors including copper weight of a half ounce, one ounce, and two ounce copper, along with layer side with inner and outer layers. We will utilize these in the constraints setup. And within the constraints, you can see we're making use of these classifications and other factors for the plated through to plated through copper spacing checks. And it's as easy as that. Now I would simply select each of my constraint categories and set up my values. Now that I've given you a quick overview, let's jump into the demo. I've opened up a design from within the Manufacturing Risk Assessment Tool, also known as the MRA. And from here, I will launch the Analysis Definition Manager. From here, we can manage our classification sets as it's very easy to add and delete as needed. Each classification set has its own classification, constraint, and factors associated with it. For this exercise, I'll use my classifications as my classification set. And by using the three-step process I outlined earlier, I'll jump to my first step by defining my factors. As you can see, I've already added the factors that I'm interested in using for this particular classification set. So now let's jump to the second step of the setup process by defining my classifications. I went ahead and added three classifications, which can easily be done by selecting the Add Classifications icon. Additionally, I added the factors I wanted to use to classify the designs by selecting the Factors icon. As you can see, I've set Simple to any design less than or equal to six layers with a board thickness greater than or equal to 100 thousandths, while any design less than or equal to 14 layers with a board thickness of greater than 100 thousandths would take on the classification of standard. And as you can see, I also set up the factors for my complex design as well. And now that we've set up our classification criteria, let's jump to the third step by setting up the constraints themselves. As I drop into the etch area, you will see it's further broken out by different types of etch categories. And then as we drop into each of these, we can see more detailed constraints. Let's go ahead and expand this plated through annular ring constraint. When I select this top level constraint, I can start adding factors. As you can see, it is reading all the factors that I have listed within my factors tab. And as I select them for addition, it will bring in each of these factors along with the option values that I added, such as half ounce, one ounce, and two ounce copper weights. Now that I have my constraints identified for this particular constraint, I can start populating the values. I've already set some of these values from within the copper spacing section. So I'll jump up there to show you how you can quickly test these settings. Here from the via to via copper spacing, you can see I have different values based on the design class versus copper weight versus layer side. And to see the results for this category, we can quickly run the analysis. Now, if I wanted to run all checks under copper spacing, I would simply select at this level and rerun my analysis. 
Okay, now that my analysis is run, let's jump to the MRA to review the results. As you can see, my system interrogated this design, and based on the board thickness and layer count, it determined this design meets the standard classification criteria, so it applied those constraints against the design. So as you can see, by managing your constraints in this fashion, you can build an intelligent DFM analysis approach that can greatly improve your analysis efficiency. When I select the first issue for review, you can see my constraint range value for yellow is set to 4 mils, while both the red and green are 15% above and below this nominal value. Also keep in mind, the system understands the difference between the inner and outer layers along with the copper weights per layer and properly assigns the range values for the analysis. Of course, this built-in analysis method is very useful while developing your constraints. The typical user would use either the Analysis Run MRA Revolution option or select the desired constraint set from within the wizard during their import process. To show you an example of this process, let's open up a different board that I might know little to nothing about and let the system automatically interrogate the design and select the proper rules for analysis. Now that our analysis is complete, we can see that this design was classified as a complex design, again based off board thickness and the number of layers, and now we can drive into the results of this design where we ran our full classification set against it. Let me just quickly show you a couple of results from this design. Here we found a pad-to-pad -pad issue where we're looking for three and a half mils, while the design has a pad to circuit violation of less than a half a mil. And one last result that we'll look at is this exposed via to exposed via, where we're looking for three and a half mils and only measured 1.487. So once you're happy with your constraint set, you're ready to add it to your standard process and apply it to other designs. I hope you found this demo informative, and if you have any additional questions, please contact Mentor, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.